Hi everyone, Janie here. Welcome back to my garden. So today is the September backyard garden tour. And I have to be honest with all of you, it's actually been a couple days since I filmed. It's actually been a week uh, because my family and I, we escaped away for one last vacation this year. We went houseboating with my parents on a reservoir uh, close to here that actually was like 90% full, which is crazy because we are in a massive drought but this reservoir had enough water thank goodness and it was glorious it was so wonderful to kind of get away i don't know if any of you have been houseboating before but it's one of my absolute favorite vacations um, we did find a waterfall it was absolutely gorgeous let me show you guys a little clip right here So I don't want to talk too much about my vacation, but I just wanted to explain why that um, there was kind of a jump, a lag in my videos. So the last video, or my filming, there wasn't a lag in my videos. The last video I had was, it was just starting to rain. And that was actually the day that we left for vacation. And it was actually an absolute downpour after that. Um, we Davis actually had a flood warning and it was glorious. like. Just every, it was so much rain that everything got hydrated and all the plants, I could just feel that it was like a sigh of relief, which is fantastic. So the, my last video from yesterday, I was talking about these rain barrels and how they should fill up for, with about one inch of rain. So we left right as it was starting to rain and, um, I assumed I was gonna come home to very, very full overflowing rain barrels based on how much rain we got. We got almost two inches of rain. They're empty. <laughs> <laughs> when I came home and I saw that they were empty, I just thought, what on earth? What is going on? So I've been troubleshooting and I've been trying to figure it out and I have a leak underneath this rain barrel right here. So I've got to get it fixed. I mean, I'm super happy that I found out that there was a leak before, you know, our actual rainy season. We usually... Usually late October is when we actually start getting rain, about average one inch a month. Um, so, you know, I only missed out on one filling of these barrels and that's okay, but it was so disappointing to come home from vacation, imagining that these rain barrels were gonna be totally full and they were completely empty. I mean, they have like a little bit left. <laughs> but it's just so frustrating <laughs> so frustrating i've been waiting for these guys to get filled so just wanted to give you guys an update on these rain barrels they are not full even though they should be and i do have a leak and the leak is actually in the white piping underneath um so it was human error it was my fault i didn't connect them well enough um so i just have to go in and i have to fix that and i think i'm gonna have jason help me just to kind of check my work and make sure that i do everything right because i don't want to waste any more rain okay so just want to give you guys an update on that let's get started with the garden tour Okay, I want to start off over here in this little garden bed. Uh, right before we left, I planted this lavender bougainvillea, which I actually think is called blueberry ice. I was looking it up. It has this beautiful lavender color of these bracts. These bracts are basically done. Um, and then it has this variegated leaf right here. And it's beautiful. It's gorgeous. I thought I killed it when I transplanted it, but I think it's okay. I actually think it's doing fine. You know, I expected it to go into shock this plant was root bound um and then i felt like i like cr i mean i literally cracked the root ball in half um when i put it in but so far so good i do have drip to it i have a half gallon per hour emitter that i think i am going to take away because normally you don't really want to water bougainvillea too much uh too much water will cause it to to be stressed it actually likes to be more dry um, and then every once in a while have like a deluge of water uh, but i just put it in there just to kind of um limp it along as i was plant as after i planted it and i think it's i think it's actually doing great so you know cross my fingers let's hope that it does okay i also transplanted this ballet slippers hibiscus right here that's doing really well as well i just moved it from like over here to here i have to come in and i have to mulch and i have to fix my path but you know it's just it's just time 
<laughs> time is the biggest issue I have these days. Um, you know, especially being a mom and going on vacation and all this kind of stuff. I'm sure you guys know. Okay, so over here I have my um, Royal Velvet Super Tunias. They're kind of starting to fade a little bit. I can see they're getting too much water. I also think my lawn is getting too much water. I'm just going to have to back off on everything. Um, we've been having so much heat. It's been intense, intense heat. And then once we got all that rain, now it's like, <laughs> it's like completely switched over to the other side. But it also is cooler. The high today is going to be in the high 80s. Um, you can see I have a sweater on. It's about 51 degrees right now, um, which is amazing. Amazing. Uh, but I can see that the plants, I, I can see that it's time to start cutting things, to cutting my water back. And you know that when your plants, the leaves start to kind of get, take a little yellow tinge to it. Um, that's when you know that it's probably time to start cutting back on your water. Uh, my boba hydrangeas, these poor things, I'm going to come in um, and I'm going to deadhead them. I was just going to leave them because I thought that they would be pretty. I have a couple heads, um, bl bloom heads right there. They just, they just look dead. <laughs> <laughs> they just they're done so I will come in and I will deadhead those um yeah I I don't know I you know I have really high hopes for these guys but this might just not be the right place for them it's like I want it to be the right place for them but what's that adage um uh, the right plant in the right place, you know, and it's like, I don't, I, I think this is the right plant. I want it to work, but it's just not the right place for it. Uh, so we'll see. This one is starting to get some fall color though. Isn't that pretty? And then behind here, I have my Mandevilla or Mandevilla. That's starting to bloom a little bit as well. It's mixed in with a Clematis Montana as well. So I'm going to leave that. That blooms, the Clematis Montana blooms super, super early in the season. And it's absolutely beautiful. I love it. Um, I think I'm also going to move the Mandevilla because uh, I don't think it gets enough sun. I, you can see I have two blooms on here and that's um, you know, that's kind of how it's been all season is I've gotten one bloom, two blooms, you know, that's it. Uh, so it, I think it just needs more sun. No big deal. Over here, I have my African Daisy. This is the white one with the purple, like dark purple eye. It's absolutely beautiful. I love it. I cut it way, way, way back um, and it's completely flushed back out. So that should start blooming soon. I think we'll see. I have my red twig dogwood here. This one's doing pretty well. I was worried about it because um, we pruned this oak tree way, way, way back this year. And so both the Wichita Blue Juniper and the Elegantissima Dogwood got, are getting way more sun now than I had imagined it would. Um, and so I'm not totally sure how it's going to handle. I'm going to keep watching it. I think the Dogwood's doing fine and the Wichita Blue Juniper is just doing amazing. I have to say, I absolutely love this plant. I think I'm going to do a plant profile on this. Um, because it is a zone three through seven I think it is and I am a zone 9b but I don't know if all of you have heard of sunset zones I, I think there's only a west coast thing sunset zones I think that the Wichita blue juniper is in my sunset zone and I'm not super familiar with sunset zones I started reading about it and you know researching it I think I probably will do a video on it but I'm pretty sure this guy is in my sunset zone um, and what a sunset zone is you know as far as I know is um, it's much more detailed zoning right and which includes you know like micro climates of the area so it's really easy to say that a whole swath of California is zone 9b but you know like my zone 9b is different than my mother's no zone 9b who lives in Redding is two hours north actually gets snow right we never get snow and she has much more higher highs and lower lows than we do but we're both technically still zone 9b so a sunset zone makes it a little bit more specific to your area anyway so I'm pretty sure the Wichita Blue Juniper is in my sunset zone here in Davis. Um, I'll put it on the screen, whatever it is. Uh, but it's doing, it's doing fantastic. I love this plant. So one of the things, one of the areas that I started working on a little bit more this month was this whole shade garden bed. I put this bench here to, as just a placeholder. I'm not going to leave it here, but I do want a bench there. And I'm thinking of a white bench. And then I am going to espalier stuff on the back. I'm going to do diamonds. And I was going back and forth between white, like 
like white pieces of wood or wire to kind of like make it disappear and again you all are so fantastic and awesome and amazing it was like a hundred percent of you said wire <laughs> So it was like, okay, decision made. Thank you so much, right? Um, so I will be putting a wire espalier up here. I haven't decided what to put up yet. I really want to put climbing roses. However, I do have the Pence Gallery Garden Tour in May, May 7th, 2023. And I don't think the climbing roses will be grown enough by then. So I might put something temporary for just, just for the garden tour um, and then at, right after that put the climbing roses in or maybe put the climbing roses in and then put something behind it just so that I can have something here for the garden tour. Um, I also added, I started planting this whole area. This whole area was an absolute debacle. <laughs> if you saw that video, I will link it up above. The soil here is compacted, hard, dry clay. It is absolutely miserable. I was so sore after I was trying to work in through this um, soil here. I can kind of show you back here. This and this, it rained. And you can see, still see, there's cracks in the soil because it's so dry. I mean, it is an absolute mess. So when we moved into this house, we had landscape rock. Everywhere where there's black mulch, there was landscape rock. And there's this intense, here's a little scrap of it that I didn't get around to throwing away this this super super thick landscape fabric super thick um, and then it had landscape rock on it so all of the soil here has just been compacted not gotten any moisture not gotten any life in it at all so this whole area I, I need to I just need to fix so I started planting this these mystic spires blue salvia back here and um, it was just it was mud it was absolutely terrible so I scrapped that and I started amending it with this fir mulch bark basically it's um, like pine bark mulch which is what you want to amend the soil with if you have heavy clay soil and as soon as I did that it was like workable and wonderful I do see I have earwig damage can you guys see this this is earwig damage. So if you guys see holes, like irregular holes like this, these are earwigs. So I'll come out here and I'll put some sluggo around these plants and it'll be totally fine. We get, we get a ton of earwigs back here or all over my property. <laughs> um, so right here, I did get a lot of comments about planting the salvia back here where it's a little bit more shady. I call this my shade garden bed. This area from about right here over, it does get some good afternoon and evening sun, right? Because the sun sets right there. That way is west. So it does actually get some sun. I would say it gets about six hours of sun. Um, and, but I did want to say everybody was concerned about these Mystic Spires Blue Salvia. They can actually handle part shade. This variety of salvia can actually handle part shade because I, I know that, at least in my climate, right? I live in a very hot climate. Um, I know that because I have them in the front yard under my crepe myrtle tree and they get part shade. They maybe get three or four hours of sun, but it is hot afternoon sun. So it's the exact same situation as back here. That's why I know that these plants are going to do really really well back here because it's the exact same lighting conditions as the ones in my front yard and those are doing absolutely wonderful so again this bench is just for placement these two planters are just for placement i'm you know trying to find some really good um blue and white planters um, and then a white bench right here you know and and i'm just trying not to rush i'm trying not to um I'm trying not to make rash decisions basically because that is that's what I do often <laughs> so I have these Helen Von Stein right here and you can see they've gotten attacked by earwigs while I was gone on vacation so I'm going to do that today I'm going to come out and I'm going to put sluggo um, all here I have my agapanthus um, I have my golf ball no beach ball golf ball beach ball pittosporum right here that's loving its life right there it's really really happy and then these white annual vinca that are not as happy i don't think they get enough sun and i don't think i think they're getting too much water so just a whole bunch of stuff that i i do need to work on um so one of the things 
while I was on vacation, you know, I have all this extra time. <laughs> so I was looking at supertunias. One of the issues is we are last frost date is early March, like March 15th. And um, it's in some, you can even see some places say our last frost date is February 28th. So um, we are in the season, we're in the swing of things very early, but supertunias do not come out because they're from Proven Winners and Proven Winners is based in the Midwest. You usually can't find supertunias until about May. So I was kind of fretting and, you know, I absolutely love these supertunia blue skies right here. The color of them with the black fence behind it and kind of in the shade is just incredible. It's amazing. I know they don't look fantastic right now. That's just because the rain has weighed them down down and it's kind of late in the season but trust me they look absolutely incredible and I really want to plant some in the ground over here because I think it will be absolutely beautiful incredibly beautiful so I knew I wasn't going to be able to find them right after our last frost date right when you normally start planting your your annuals so what I'm doing <laughs> this year and this you know do as I say, not as I do. I don't even, this is a total experiment, but I purchased a whole bunch of supertunias in a bunch of different colors, the colors that I want for next year. Not all of them, just some of them. And I think I'm gonna store them in my greenhouse over the winter. So petunias are actually perennials, but they cannot handle even the slightest bit of frost. And we do get frost a little bit. Um, you know, we get a couple days of frost. So if you can protect them from frost, or if you can uh, keep them indoors, or if you can keep them in greenhouse, technically they should last and they should they should be able to make it through the winter season so i'm going to try that this year and i'm going to see what happens and i'm going to see if i can keep them alive and limp them along over the winter season so that i can plant them out early march right after our last frost date and then have a beautiful show of color and not have to wait till you know may or something like that to get my hands on these supertunias i will keep you all updated it is a total, total experiment. So moving on to my hydrangeas and honeysuckle over here. My hydrangeas are starting to look like fall. They're looking really pretty. We had so much rain last week that they did all get weighed down quite a bit. They're starting to pop back up a little bit, um, but I don't care. Like they just needed some rain, but look at how beautiful. Look, at, I just love these things. So these guys are about three years old. Um, I'm, I'm, you know, limelight hydrangeas, they just don't grow as much here as they do in other places of the country. I know that a lot of people will say, oh, my limelights get seven, eight, nine feet tall. Well, mine don't. <laughs> And I think it's just because of our conditions, our dry weather conditions, you know, it's just not perfect conditions for them. So they don't thrive here as much, but they still do look beautiful. And um, hydrangeas, particularly green hydrangeas were my wedding flower. Um, so it's really important to me to have them in my garden. Uh, so I'm just gonna keep, I'm just gonna keep going. I'm gonna keep limping them along and taking care of them because I think they're absolutely beautiful. And I really do love the fall color they start getting. They don't get like, you know, in some places where, um, I don't know where they get they get the pink in the fall. We get a little bit of pink, but not enough pink. Not enough pink to make it, you know, worth it to buy it for the fall color, I would say. Um, but it does still look absolutely gorgeous in the fall. Now what is showing off these days are my bougainvillea. Look at this guy. So this is my purple queen. I should say girl. Um, I actually ended up, I didn't have this one earlier in the season. I didn't have this one hooked up on drip and I was just watering it by hand once a week and it wasn't happy. It just totally wasn't happy. So I put it on drip. I put it on actually a half a gallon per hour emitter. Um, and it's just loving life. It's just absolutely loving it. And I love it in front of the black fence. I think it is so beautiful, absolutely beautiful. So speaking of the black fence, we are almost done, not quite. 
Dwight, my cat, is out here enjoying the sun with me this morning. Um, so we still have like some touch-ups to do, little touch-up things you can see down here. Uh, the, right before we left, Jason came out and he really worked his butt off and, and painted a whole bunch of that. Yesterday I was out in my oak tree garden bed painting the base, you know, the, the footer boards, which we obviously still need to get to over here. Um, but I'm just not rushing it because we have, you know, I started in the late summer painting this fence. Normally you, you probably should wait till fall or winter to paint a fence once all everything's lost its leaves. Um, so it's, you know, we've got 90% of it done. So we're almost done with the fence, but we just have some more to go and I will get to it right now. I am... I am so busy with fall planting uh, that, you know, cause I, cause this is the time, this is the time for us to get all of our perennials in, all of our shrubs in, all that kind of stuff. So um, that's what I'm really focusing on right now. And then this other type of stuff, the structural stuff is on the back burner. So if I have time to get to it, like I did yesterday, then I will get to it. But if I don't have time, eh, I'm not worried about it. I'll get to it this winter. All right, now for some fantastic news. I am so excited to share this with you all. I've been waiting for this garden tour so I can share this with you guys. Here are my pollinator garden beds. These are all pollinator friendly plants. I do not spray this area. I do, I, I, you know, baby this area because I want the pollinators to enjoy these plants. I've planted them with a lot of pollinator friendly stuff. They're all doing well. They're kind of, you know, at the end of their season. Um, but I do have, you know, I have some baby milkweed over here. Here is my narrow leaf milkweed and here is my showy milkweed. I have milkweed in here, of course, for the monarch butterflies. I've been really focusing on monarchs this year and planting mil milkweed for monarchs um, with the goal to have the monarchs lay their eggs on the milkweed to help the monarch, the dwindling monarch population. Um, it's a project that I've been doing with Rich from the Old Sweets Farm. I will link his YouTube channel down below. He's fantastic. He's wonderful. He's so knowledgeable. I have not seen a monarch butterfly in my garden all season until right before I left for vacation, I saw one. And of course I absolutely freaked out <laughs> and like ran around searching for my phone because I wanted to get it on video. And as soon as I got my phone and ran outside, it was gone. So, but I did see one. And then a couple days later, I found this. Can you guys see that? That is a monarch egg. I am so, so excited about it. It's this little white thing right here hanging on the underside of this leaf. Can you guys see right there? There we go. Oh, I'm so excited. I saw another one, but I cannot find it. I can't find where it is. Uh, milkweed is the only source of food and um, like a nursery, like a the place for the, the monarch butterflies to lay their eggs. They only can do it on milkweed because it is the only source of food for their larvae. So that's why it's so important to plant milkweeds in your garden. Um, and it has to be native milkweed, native milkweed to your area. This is showy milkweed, this plant right here. So this is native to my area. So the monarchs that come through my area, they like this, this showy milkweed and this narrow leaf milkweed right here. Um, but I am so excited and I really hope that I get more eggs than this. I mean, this is the only one I can find, right? I, I could have sworn I saw another one. Anyway, so very, very exciting. I'm going to baby this. I'm going to protect it with everything I can. Um, but I'm so excited to have found this. I think it was, that's, even if it's just one butterfly, one caterpillar that I get from this, it will totally be worth it. I'm super excited about this. Okay, so now to show you all my pots, my annual pots, all the annuals are from Proven Winners. They're doing okay. They're kind of they're kind of at the end of their season. They're kind of starting to struggle a little bit. I do have this unplugged pink salvia that I am actually going to transplant because it is a perennial in my area. It's still starting to bloom. I went around and I deadheaded most of it the other day, um, but I am still getting some bloom stalks that will come. Um, so I'm sh you know I'm going to still leave it for a little bit, um, but I do want to put it in my garden. I think I want to put it in my front yard, and it's so beautiful, and I love that plant. It's been such a workhorse over the season. 
I think that the rain knocked off all my lantana. I have the luscious citron lantana. That's another one that I'm going to replant out into the, I think I'm going to put that in my cottage garden bed. Um, so I am kind of limited. I, I'm not going to leave these pots here over the winter just because I do want to replant all of this stuff. Um, I want to reuse all of it. I do have this super tunia Bordeaux right here that I want to pot up and put in the greenhouse to try and overwinter and save. You know, it's all just, just trying things right I'm just kind of experimenting and seeing what I can do um, so so you know I could probably leave these pots for another couple months but I think I'm gonna start taking them apart probably sooner rather than later just so that I can get all these plants out you really want to get your plants planted six weeks before your uh, first frost date so that they can root in and they can you know get comfortable in their new environment so I think I'm like 10 weeks, 12 weeks before my last frost date. I have to check, I'll put it on the screen right now. Um, but I know I'm getting close, so I gotta start kind of thinking about this stuff. Here's the hammock that's supposed to go right here. We actually took it off because we looped it over around the board up here this the beam I should say, and it's starting to wear on the beam, so we're actually gonna do like a a swing hook thing. Um, so Jason is working on that. That's why it's not hung up and it's sat in a poor little mess right there uh, but the hammock will be going back up obviously we'll take it down for the winter season um, but i love having the hammock there so we will definitely be putting that back up once we're done with that okay and then here's my little vegetable garden i just harvested a whole bunch of my marconi sweet peppers and then i have this other pepper right here from my friend i don't remember um, she gave me the start it's just green peppers um, my purple hyacinth bean is going crazy and loving life. I've been cutting it back and it's still super, super happy. Um, and my tomatoes are doing really well as, as well. So tomatoes, they kind of calm down. They, you know, they stop growing uh, once we get super hot. So we did have that massive heat wave um, where we were like 117 degrees Fahrenheit. And so they, they definitely did struggle. You can see this cute little one that I had been letting grow through this thing it's cracked it's it's you know it was just too much the the difference in temperature was just too much for it um so that's okay i i'm gonna leave it because i can see that i still have a bunch of tomatoes growing right now because now we're in the temperature range that tomatoes do like to grow in um so i'm just gonna leave them knowing that i'll you know i'll get a little bit more off of this a little bit more um harvested but not too much and then I'll kind of take it out my plan is is to put some lettuce in here um, you know to put some cool weather crops in here and um, kind of just see how it does over the winter season this beautiful mess right here is something that I do have to tackle um, so I do have these uh, sun credible sunflowers they're beautiful they're gorgeous they are not good for these pots right here <laughs> I've already cut them back once this year and they just they just keep coming over and they're taking over the rest of the pot and the bougainvillea is taking over so I just have to come through and I have to clean it all up it's beautiful if you like this kind of messy look it looks absolutely gorgeous but um yeah it's a bit much <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to come in here and I'm going to clean it all up. Um, we do have streets. So certain, certain months of the year, our town will come and they will pick up a big pile of your green waste. You can just leave a pile in the street and they will come and they will pick it up about once a week to once every other week. So I'm going to wait for any type of cutback or anything like that until they start that. My first one I think is October 17th. Um, so I'm not even, you know, I'm just going to kind of leave this and enjoy the messiness and color of it all um, until later on this month when I'll start kind of cutting things back. I have been looking up, you know, leaving places plants for the birds and everything like that over the winter season versus cleaning it up in the winter um, and I'm kind of going back and forth on how I want to do it um, I haven't really decided if I want to totally cut everything back which is what I normally do or if I want to leave some of it so um, I think I'll probably do about half and half but these I do have to clean up I you know it's it's a beautiful mess is how I'll, I'll describe it Okay, and then the last thing I want to show you all is my side yard. 
Um, the arch is looking gorgeous. I haven't anchored it in yet. I have to do that. We, you know, we came through and we painted behind it and it looks really good. And I actually started twining some of the honeysuckle around it and you can see it's, it's really growing really well already. Um, but I do need to anchor it in. So I will be working on that this week. Then all the pots that I got from my neighbor um, who passed away, she was this wonderful gardener. Uh, because we went on vacation, I took all her pots and I put them all right here. And then I hooked it all up to drip so that our house sitter didn't have to water all of these pots. And I'm actually really happy I did that because now I don't really have to worry about it. And I'm no longer coming out here every day and watering them. Um, so <laughs> look at how good this bougainvillea is doing. Look at that beautiful so this is a barbacar spugenvillea um, these are the same variety that i have over in my beautiful mess area that i just showed you all um, so my neighbor had a bunch of these in pots and she really enjoyed them um, now i just have to figure out what to do with all of them and they're beautiful they're absolutely gorgeous but i don't want to leave it like this so this is just kind of just for now we're gonna leave it <laughs> just until i can figure out what i want to do um, so yeah, so I did install this arch right here. Absolutely beautiful honeysuckle over there and the honeysuckle is going to come over like this. The reason why I did that is because for the garden tour in May, this is going to be the entrance, which sadly, I mean, garbage cans. <laughs> so obviously I'm going to move the garbage cans for the tour. I am going to replace this light. I didn't even notice how horrible this light looks. Um, so I am going to replace that, but this, so this is the, the gate that everybody's going to come in. So I really want to make this area a little bit more inviting and beautiful when people come in for the tour. So that is why that arch is there. That is why there's going to be honeysuckle. And then I'm going to start planting things up over here and planting things up kind of all along here just to make it you know as like an entrance someplace you want to go and then um you know while I was on vacation of course I was reading all these wonderful gardening books you know and they're talking about hiding the garden not showing the garden um all at once oh there was a fabulous quote Ugh, I'm gonna put it on the screen right now but it basically was you know don't tell the whole story right away you know you want to kind of hide things so having the arch there is kind of like um you know, an introduction to the story of my garden and you can't really see anything yet. And then as you walk through, you walk through the entrance and then all of a sudden you see the garden. And that's kind of how I want to start working on it, is I want to start working on the, um, the experience when you're in my garden as people come through the garden. So I will be working on that. I will be continuing. This is a process. This is something that's, you know, never going to be done and I will constantly be fussing with it. But now that I have kind of a timeline with this May garden tour, um, you know, I kind of, I kind of, the clock's kind of ticking a little bit. So I am starting to uh, speed up on my decisions with all of these things and getting things done. All right, so that is it for my September backyard garden tour. I have to say, taking a week off and just kind of clearing my head, reading gardening books, making lists of the things that I want to do and just kind of just dreaming about it has kind of, I'm ready. I have plans. I have a whole plan of everything that I want to do this fall. This is going to be a busy, busy fall for me because not only am I getting my garden ready for the garden tour and in fall is when I need to plant most of my plants for the garden tour, but I do have my flower field that I need to start prepping and getting ready because I want to plant everything in it. I want to get all my cool flower seedlings in for the end of October. So this next month is going to be crazy in the most wonderful way possible. I'm really excited about it and I appreciate you all coming along with me. So I hope you enjoyed this garden tour. I hope you all have a wonderful day and I hope you all have a chance to get into your garden today.